On Monday, the president welcomed King Abdullah II of Jordan to the White House. In doing so, Biden thanked the king for what he called his vital leadership in a tough neighborhood. Jordan shares land borders with Israel and the West Bank, Syria, Iraq, and Saudi Arabia. The king has long been a staunch supporter of the two-state solution, and the White House says President Biden reaffirmed his own support for it during their meeting. I had the pleasure of sitting down with King Abdullah in Washington on Friday for a wide-ranging exclusive. Your Majesty, welcome. Thank you, Fahid. I have to ask you about first, the, you know, what, what seems the most startling thing looking at your part of the world, which is the new government in Israel. Um, Prime Minister Netanyahu and you had a good relationship, but a tough one. Um, the new prime minister, however, is somebody, Naftali Bennett, who says explicitly that he rules out the idea ever of a Palestinian state. In fact, he's talked about annexing Israel, annexing the West Bank. So how do you look at that new government and where do you think the prospects for peace are? Well, uh, again, Farid, we've known each other long enough to know that we always look at the glass half full. Um, and coming to the United States as, as, I think, the first leader from that part of the world, it was important to, to unify messaging because there's a lot of challenges, as you will know, and we'll probably get into. Um, so it, it, it was important for me not only to meet with um, the, the Palestinian leadership after a war, um, which I did with Abu Mazin. Uh, I met uh, the Prime Minister, I met General Gantz, because we really have to get people back to the table. So under that umbrella of how do we get Israelis and Palestinians to talk, uh, maybe understanding that the challenge is that, that this government may not be the most ideal government to, in, in my view, a two-state solution, which I think is the only solution. Um, how can we um, build the differences uh, between Jordan and Israel, because it has not been good. Um, but more importantly, uh, from my view, is getting the Israelis and Palestinians engaging again. Um, and I came out of uh, those meetings feeling very encouraged. And I think we've seen um, in the past couple of weeks uh, not, order, not only um, better understanding between Israel and Jordan, but the voices coming out of both Israel and Palestine that we need to move forward and, and reset that relationship. Do you think that the Israelis um can maintain the situation as it is, which is you have all these Palestinians uh, in the West Bank and Gaza. They, Israel has suzerainty over them, but they don't have political rights. Israel seems to feel, look, we're doing fine. We're, you know, we've become an extraordinary technological uh, regional power, maybe even global power. We're economically thriving. Uh, the Arabs are making peace with us, even though we haven't moved on the Palestinian issue. Uh, can't Israel just keep doing what it's doing? I, I think that's a very fragile facade. Um, and I say that because, um, um, again, when we have wars and we've seen, and it, there's a template there. I know what's going to happen over the, the, the three weeks and how uh, the, you know, there's loss of life um, and, and tragedy on all sides. This last war uh, with Gaza, I, I thought was different. Since 1948, this is the first time I feel that a civil war happened in Israel. When you look at the villages and the towns, um, Arab Israelis and Israelis got into conflict. And I think that was a wake-up call for uh, the people of Israel and the people of Palestine, that unless we move along, unless we give hope to the Palestinians, and again, part of the discussions that we've had uh, with, with, with our Israeli counterparts is how do we invest in the livelihood of Palestinians? Because if they lose hope, um, and then, God forbid, another cycle, the next war is going to be even more damaging Nobody ever loses in these conflicts, but uh, this last one, there were no victors. Uh, and I think um, that internal dynamics that we saw inside of Israeli towns and cities is, is a bit of a wake-up call for all of us. Dory Gold, uh, influential advisor to Prime Minister Netanyahu, uh, recently said Jordan needs to start thinking of itself as the Palestinian state. In other words, there is a two-state solution. The, the Palestinian state is Jordan. I think the, uh, the implication would be, of course, you have 60, 70 pen Palestinians. You could, you could absorb the Palestinians in the West Bank. Uh, you know, this has been touted before, but here you have a fairly influential Israeli saying it. What's your reaction? Well, again, that, that, that type of rhetoric is nothing new. Um, and, and, and basically, um, th those people have agendas that they want to do at the expense of others. Uh, Jordan is Jordan. Uh, we have um, a, a mixed society from, from different uh, uh, ethnic and religious uh, backgrounds. Um, I, I would maybe contest the, 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 the percentage and the figures that you had mentioned. Uh, but it is our country. Um, uh, the Palestinians don't want to be in Jordan. 
They want their lands, they want their football team, they want um, their flag uh, to fly ab above their houses. Um, and, and so that takes us into very dangerous uh, rhetoric. So as you alluded to, um, if we do not talk about the <coughs> two-state solution, then again, uh, are we talking about a one-state solution? Is it going to be fair, transparent, and democratic? Um, I think the one-state solution is far more challenging uh, to, to, to those in Israel that push that, 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 that theory than the two-state solution, which is the only way. What, are you, what, do you do? what are you going to do? Are you going to push all the Palestinians out of their homes in the West Bank and just create instability on the other side? At the end of the day, Jordan gets a vote in this. Um, and I think our red lines have been uh, clearly identified. Your Majesty, what, what has it been like uh, meeting with Joe Biden compared to his predecessor? This is uh, a very different president from the one we had before. Well, uh, I have uh, fortunately uh, had a, a, a very strong relationship with all presidents. Um, and that is because my father taught me that uh, you have to respect um, the, the officers of the president, um, uh, the head of state, and, and that's not just America. Um, and uh, my, my discussions have always been fruitful, uh, done in mutual respect and understanding. Um, uh, President Biden, I have known since I was a young man, um, visiting the Congress uh, with my father when he was a young senator. Um, so, so this is an old friendship. Um, and uh, I was just so delighted to see him in the White House. And uh, I, I don't know what images came out, but um, I, my colleagues that were with me could just see the chemistry there. Um, and my son um, uh, has, has known uh, uh, the president, and as Joe Biden was the vice president, uh, my, my son used to go and visit him um, um, at his house and in his office. So it's a, it's a family friendship. Do you expect that you will get um, a different policy out of Biden than, than Trump? Well, uh, we've lost a couple of years, and part of it has obviously been the pandemic. Um, and, and so there is, it's not the issue of a different policy, it's more of what are the plans that are out there. Um, I, I mentioned uh, Syria, uh, but also uh, when we look at Lebanon, uh, the, the, the crisis there, the, the people are suffering, um, starvation is just around the corner, the hospitals are not working, um, and a lot of discussions we've had here, and I know the Americans are working with the French, when the bottom does fall out, and it will happen in, in weeks, what can we do as the international community to step in? knowing that whatever plans we come up with, we will fall short of, of our aims and we will let people down. Um, so I think it's can we build plans to sort of move the region into the right direction. Let me ask you about stability in Jordan itself, because your country is often seen as a kind of island of stability in a very rough neighborhood. Um, you've recently had what, was, what looked to the outside world like an attempted coup. What happened there, and what do you see as the prospects for any instability in the future? Right. Well, uh, again, you know, when, when we look at uh, crises all over the world, um, and I think in this day and age, we, we, we tend to look at, 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 at crises as a snapshot uh, without really understanding the journey that actually, for example, uh, Jordan has undertaken over the past um, um, several years. Uh, regional instability, uh, wars, refugees, COVID. Um, and we, we've had to, to look at uh, many characters that tend to use um, people's frustrations and legitimate concerns of, of challenges that they have uh, in making their lives better to really push on their own agendas and, and ambitions. Uh, what I think made this uh, so sad that um, um, one of the people was my brother who did it in such a, um, uh, a, a, an amateurish and... and, and, and uh, uh, um, really disappointing way. Um, from, from our point, uh, um, uh, the intelligence services, as, as they always do, um, uh, gather information and it got to a point where um, um, they had legitimate concerns uh, that certain individuals um, were trying to push uh, my brother's ambitions for their own agendas um, and decided quite rightly to nip it in the bud and quietly. Uh, if it hadn't been for the irresponsible manner of uh, secretly taping um, uh, uh, conversations with uh, uh, officials from Jordan or leaking videos, uh, you and I wouldn't be having this conversation. Um, and I believe that, uh, you know, I am, I'm really proud when members of our uh, family uh, are successful, when they can reach out to society. Um, now, in this particular case, if, if somebody has uh, certain ambitions, I can only do so much for them. But, but I believe from a human point of view, 
uh, it comes down to sincerity at the end of the day. It's very easy to use um, um, people's grievances for personal agendas. But are you sincere in what you're trying to do for your people? And at the end of the day, we all have a responsibility to be able to come up with solutions for the people. And, and this is not just Jordan-centric. Many royal families uh, around the world uh, have these challenges. Um, if you're a member of the royal family, um, uh, you have privileges. Uh, you need to respect uh, those uh, privileges. But also there are restrictions. Um, and uh, the uh, politics at the end of the day is the purview of the monarch. Um, and so it's just unfortunate, unnecessary, um, and just created problems that we could have avoided. One of the people um, who was part of it uh, was very close to the Crown Prince of Saudi Arabia. Do you believe there was a Saudi hand in this? Uh, this is being looked at as a domestic issue. Um, we, we all know that um, uh, Bassem, who, who used to work uh, in, in Jordan, uh, is uh, uh, a senior advisor um, in Saudi Arabia. He holds a, a Saudi and American uh, passport. Uh, we have uh, witnessed um, 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 external um, 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 uh, relations on this issue. Um, but as I said, we're dealing with this as a domestic uh, um, um, problem. And I think, again, knowing Jordan, uh, finger pointing does not help at all. We have enough challenges in the region. We need to move forward. Uh, this has, I think, always been the Jordanian ethos to, to, to look to, to the future. And I think we're all about uh, mitigating challenges and, 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 and difficulties as opposed to adding to them. Let me ask you, this week, your great-grandfather um, was assassinated 70 years ago at the Temple Mount. Um, does, it, does it feel to you as though in those 70 years things just remain the same? Um, do you feel as though the things have gotten better, uh, particularly on the issue? I mean, he was assassinated by Palestinian gunmen. Uh, it feels like things haven't moved that far forward. Well, we're, we're uh, celebrating uh, our centennial. Um, and, and if you look at the history of our country with all the shocks and most of them external, um, uh, it's just amazing that uh, Jordan is still Jordan. And, and that, that reflects, I believe, on uh, the legacy of, of members of my family. But m more important, I think, the steadfastness of, uh, of, of the Jordanian people. Um, it, we, we do live in a difficult neighborhood. Um, and and it, you, you've got to sort of wake up every morning to, to look at the glass half full. Uh, these are challenges that I, I hope, you know, the, the way King Abdullah looked uh, um, at, uh, at regional politics of trying to bring uh, people together is what uh, he, my father inherited from him and what I had inherited from my father. And my son has inherited from me. So um, as difficult as the challenges are, um, I believe that we can come together. My, my great-grandfather, as you said, was killed on the steps uh, of the mosque in, 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 in Jerusalem. What we've all been about, always, is uh, looking at, at, at Jerusalem as a city that brings Muslims, Christians, and Jews together. And it's just inconceivable for me why we would want anything else. Um, and so my role, my son's role, uh, will continue to be how do we make this a city of hope, a city of peace, and bringing people together and hopefully that reflects to other policies as we deal with challenges around the Middle East. Your Majesty, it's always an honor and pleasure to talk to you. Thank you.